Hi guys, welcome back to the CFS channel. Today we will be discussing a question that you must have probably heard of because it's so common and thus important. So let's get started. So this is the question. We are given a binary search tree with all values unique and two node values. Find the lowest common ancestors of the two nodes in the BSD. Okay, lowest common ancestor, it's a new term. Let's first understand what are ancestors. See, basically, we in a branch, we have ancestors and descendants. Like 4 and 5 are ancestors of 3. Basically, they are parents, right? That's how we say our parents, our grandparents, they are our ancestors. So, 4 is parent of 3, so it's an ancestor. 5 is ancestor of 3. Similarly, 7, 6 and 5 are ancestors of 8. And here, a number can be its own ancestor or descendant. How do we know that? See, in this example, the two nodes given are 7 and 8. Here the two nodes are 7 and 8. We have to find the lowest common ancestor. What does lowest common ancestor mean? Basically, there are ancestors of both the nodes. We have to find the lowest common ancestor. It should be self-explanatory, but let us take examples and understand. If it's not clear in once, it's fine. We are going to take more examples. Here, what are ancestors of 8? 5, 6, 7 and 8 itself. What are ancestors of 7? 5, 6 and 7 itself. So what is the lowest common ancestor? See, common ancestors are 5, 6 and 7. Which is the lowest one? It is 7. Right? So that is why we are saying that the number can be its own ancestor also. Here, see, 7 is its own ancestor. If we look at this example also, here 1 and 3. What are ancestors of 1? 1 and 2. What are ancestors of 3? 3 and 2. What is the lowest common ancestor? There is only one common ancestor, which is 2. Let's take more examples. Let's look at the diagram now. We are back with our diagram. Let's take examples of two two nodes and let's understand what will be the LC of those two nodes. Suppose we are dealing with this node and this node. Then what is the lowest common ancestor? This is the same example as 7 and 8, the first example that we saw. The ancestors of this node are this itself, this node and this node. The ancestors of this node are this itself, this node, this node, this node. So what are the common ancestors? These three are common ancestors. Which is the lowest one? It is this one. So that is the answer. Similarly, let's take more nodes and understand. Suppose we are dealing with this node and this node. What are the ancestors of this node? The ancestors of this node are this, this, this and this. What is the ancestor of this node? It is this itself, this and this. What are the common ancestors? These two are the common ancestors. Which is the lowest ancestor? This is the lowest ancestor. So this is our answer. In easy terms, when we are going down a branch, we have to see where the two nodes are branching up. What is the last common point of the two branches? That will be our lowest common ancestor. See, if we are dealing with these two nodes, this will be the lowest common ancestor. If we are dealing with this node and this node, the lowest common ancestor will be the root itself. I guess we have taken enough examples. Let's look at the cases now so that we understand that how can we convert this into code. Let's talk about various cases. Suppose we have two nodes, N1 and N2. Now we will start with our root. Right? We start comparing the values of n1, n2 with root. See, by comparing, we will know whether the nodes lie on the left side or the right side. Right? How will we know that? Because BSD properties. Now, let's say the value of n1 node is actually less than the value of root node. So, we know that n1 is in the left subtree. Right? Now, suppose n2 value was more than the root value. Then that would mean that our n2 is in the right subtree. Right? If n1 is in the left subtree, n2 is in the right subtree, that means that this root is the lowest common ancestor because after this we are branching out right after this particular node when we start going towards n1 we will have to go towards left and when we start going towards n2 we will have to go towards right so this is the least common ancestor so if this is the case then our root will be the lc and similarly if n1 is in the right side and n2 is on the left side then we know that our root is lc right if you are having trouble understanding this, just take a few examples, just see that okay, this is the root value. If I take two values n1 and n2 so that they are on the different sides of the root, why will the root itself be the LC? Just take it. Okay. Then another case that we saw in the question was that if root ka value is equal to the n1 ka value or n2 ka value, then our LC is actually root itself. Right? Because that will be the lowest common ancestor. After that, n1 or n2 won't come because that value is the same. Right? So after that n1 or n2 will come, so that is one case. Now we have talked about three cases where root itself is the LCA. What other cases are possible? See, these are the times when you have to stop and think that, okay, what is the LCA? What are the different cases that we should think about? Are we missing any cases or not? Okay. Other very simple and logical cases are when both n1 and n2 are either in the left subtree 
or both n1 and n2 are in the right subtree. Let's understand what will happen when this is the case. Suppose when n1 and n2 are both in the left subtree, that means that the LCA itself lies somewhere in the left subtree, right? So we can actually divide a question into a sub question that now this is the root and now you look for the LCA. See, because we know that this root will not be the LCA. Why will it not be the LCA? If both are on the left side, that means this will this can be an LCA. When this can be an LCA, obviously this can't be LCA, right? So that means that this can't be LCA, the entire right subtree can't be LCA. So that means that we can actually divide a problem to a smaller problem by considering this particular node as the root node. So this is how we are dividing a bigger problem to a smaller problem and that is why we are using regression over here. We have to understand that why we are using regression because we can divide a problem into smaller problems. How are we doing that? By knowing that if both the nodes are on one side, either on the left side or on the right side, then we know that we can divide a problem into a smaller subproblem. If both the nodes are in the right subtree, then this is a possible LCA. Now, if this is a possible LCA, obviously this can't be LCA. If this can't be LCA and this entire cannot be LCA, we can just discard it and divide a problem into a smaller subproblem where we consider this as root and start finding the LCA. Now again here we will start seeing the conditions whether we have to go in the left subtree or in the right subtree or one of the, these three conditions and then let's see. Now see we have talked about a total of five cases. Can you think of any other case? Now I have talked about when both are on the left side or on the right side. I have talked about when one is on the left one, one is on the right in both the cases and if one of the same is equal to root. Can you think of any other cases? If not then okay we have five cases. I will be talking about two ways of writing code and dealing with these five cases. Let's get started. This is the function for which we have to write the code. This is the root of the tree given to us and these are the two nodes. We are given the integer value of the nodes. Okay. Now whenever we start dealing with tree questions, what is the first case that we should always think about? We should not start referring to the null value otherwise we will have a crash. So that is the first check. I hope now it automatically comes to you. I don't have to keep reminding to you and you will not forget this case. Okay. So now when you start practicing, you should not be missing these cases. If there is no root value, then what are we returning over? We have to return the node. We have to return the LCA. So here we will be returning what? We will be returning null answer. Okay. Now what were the cases where we were dividing our problem into smaller problems? First case was that okay, both N1 and N2 lie in the left subtree. So let's write for that. When will both the uh, nodes lie in the left subtree? When their values are lesser than the root value. So let's compare when n1 is less than root ka value. Let's see in the structure what is the value called. It's called data. In some questions they will call it key. In some questions they will call it data. So just check the structure so that you are sure that okay you are writing correctly. So if n1 is less than root ka data and n2 is also less than root ka data. That means that both of them lie in the left subtree, right? Then what can we do? We can divide a problem into a smaller subproblem because we know our LCA is in the left subtree. So what am I going to do? I'm going to call the same function. I don't need another helper function because I can use the same function itself. So here I will pass the root ka left value and I will pass n1 and n2. Now here see we don't need to check whether the root ka left exists or not. There are multiple uh, things over here and you should think about these things. Firstly see even if we pass null then there's a check. Secondly, there is no chance that it will be null because in the question we are given two nodes of the tree itself and if the values are less than the uh, root node that we are dealing that that means the left value will be there, it can't be null. But even if it is null, we are already dealing with it. So you should be thinking of these cases so that when you talk to your interviewer, you actually tell that okay, I am thinking of these cases and this is what will set you apart in the interview. Now we have written the case when our answer lies in the left subject. What about the case when our answer lies in the right subtree? Let's write that one also. When n1 is greater than root ka data and n2 is also greater than root ka data. That means what? That both the values are greater. So that means both the values lie in the right subtree. So in that case, we can reduce our problem into a smaller problem because we know that our LCA lies in the right subtree. So LCA root ka right and n1 and n2. Okay. In all the other cases, our answer will be root. Now you have to think about it. Why am I saying this? See, we were dealing with a total of five cases. Now these were the two cases where we could reduce our problem to a smaller subproblem. In all the other cases, our answer is going to be root. We will discuss this in detail. Just wait. For now, let's compile and see whether this works or not. Work. Let's submit and see. 
so yeah this works now i know you must be thinking that how are we so sure that those are the only other cases and in all the cases root will be the answer so let's discuss what were the three cases where root was the answer let's start writing them okay one case was that okay n1 lies in the left subtree and n2 lies in the right subtree let's write that so if n1 lies in the left subtree so n1 is less than root ka data and n2 lies in the right subtree so that means that n2 is greater than root ka data right so in that case answer should be root right what was the other case now it is opposite when n1 is greater than root ka data that means n1 lies in the right subtree and n2 lies in the left subtree so in that case what will happen again we will have to return root what is the other case that if root itself is equal to so if root ka data itself is equal to n1 or if it is itself equal to n2 then that means that it itself is the ancestor right so again we will have to return root so now what i have done in this case is in all the cases where we should be returning root i'll just return it so in case you are worried you can actually discuss with your interviewer and you, are, you can write all the cases to be sure now here what i am doing here i am just putting i am not putting any check over here and i am just returning so instead of this check because i know these are the only cases that are possible these are the only five cases this is just to show you that these are the only five cases so that you are very sure otherwise you should actually be putting a check over here but okay let's see whether this works or not so compilation successful let's submit and see so submission is successful so basically why i did this was to show you that when you are solving questions the point is to understand how you can discuss all the cases with your interviewer and you can actually explain why you are putting the else condition even if you are writing a smaller code you should be able to explain all the cases because if you discuss that with your interviewer that is setting you apart that is setting an example okay let's quickly discuss the time and the space complexity here see we will be going down one of the branches right in total so the time complexity is order of h which is h is the height of the binary tree here we are not taking any extra space but again recursive space will be used because we are using recursion that also can be of the order of height of the tree itself why are we going down only one branch see in the worst case we will be going either towards left right left right like that but we will be going towards uh, we will either go till lowest common ancestor so that can be the lowest point right so we'll be going down one branch so i hope you have understood if you have any questions do let me know and i hope they will show up tomorrow i'll wait for you